subscribe. So welcome everyone to Digital Marketing Corner. My name is Natalia Nicholson and let's get started with content marketing. So let me share my screen. There we go. So we're going to go into present mode. There we go, we're in present mode. So welcome to content marketing in a nutshell. So Women in Digital Business is a community for underrepresented women um, to really, really help empower us to be able to sell online more successfully using digital strategies. Especially in this day and age where we are opening up businesses more than any other group worldwide. So everything you need to know about content marketing, about digitalization, you will find it through me and you'll find it in the Women in Digital Business community. For those of you that have not attended one of my workshops before, who am I? Who am I? Who is this crazy woman? Um, so I've got a long history of entrepreneurism starting from 2003, so 20 years ago. Um, in that time, short version, I've had my own e-commerce store that I launched in 2003. Um, I went bankrupt, literally, like I went to the courts to file bankruptcy, but couldn't file, so I didn't have enough money, go figure. Um, and from there, tried to go back to work, couldn't do it, started a cleaning business because I had great admin skills and what could I start up that didn't need much capital? Um, made that into seven figures, sold it once I had a whole load of national contracts and had children, so I couldn't run the national contracts because it was too demanding being a mum. Um, from there, I got into business coaching because I felt like many business coaches hadn't actually set their own business up or gone through the pains and challenges that I had. Um, from there, I wasn't happy because I'm a natural born entrepreneur. So I designed my own range of candles and got into e-commerce. And that's when my digital journey really came about. I then got asked to speak on stages, be a part of the Google Digital Garage, upskilling businesses. Obviously, I had my own e-commerce business, which I founded, NN Inspirational Gifts. And in the pandemic, I started Women in Digital Business because I felt there needed to be a space that was dedicated to helping women without paying a lot of money and money that's over the odds that I've paid on particular programs to really understand the strategies that you need to sell successfully online. Things that Airbnb, Uber, um, all the large organisations you've seen come about in the recent years and even more traditional ones like Apple, they're all using these strategies. If JP Morgan was your dad, you would know about financial investing. If your dad was a farmer, you would know about agriculture. Um, so this community was very much built for those who've got that grit and tenacity and haven't got a choice but to make it, but to just reduce the amount of stakes that are made by just not knowing, because when you know, you know. Um, wasn't always this way. It took me quite a long time for me to reach my successes. And really, it's only in the last six years. And that's because I under now understand what growth planning is. I now understand about how to use data, especially in this digital world, and analyze where you are in, that, in the moment. Identifying when you've got half-built bridges, meaning you're constantly trying things, never giving it enough time to see if it works or not before starting something new. So you just get stuck on this hamster wheel because you're constantly trying. It feels like you're not getting anywhere. And when you don't, you just move on to something else. And especially if you're not scoring it and collecting the data of what's going wrong, you just keep collecting more half-built bridges. And half-built bridges can become shiny object syndrome for us entrepreneurs. Um, for anybody that doesn't know what SOS is, it's when you think, oh, my gosh, I'm going to have an e-commerce store. Oh, my gosh, if I partner with this person, we can build a community and I'm going to launch a fashion magazine. And before you know it, you've got five ideas on the go all at the same time that are residual income. And one of them must possibly work. What you do is you reduce your focus. And that's where I learned how to optimize marketing efforts to get the results, get intentional results. Optimization is really, really key because... When you are building out any form of marketing campaign, remember, and every business is not successful until it's in profit or it's generating some form of income. That's what measures of a business is successful or not, is how much profit it makes and how much money it makes in terms of turnover, because the two are very, two very, very different things. So being able to optimize and figure out when something's not going right is key. You know, assets, content is a huge asset and it's all about 
you know, figuring out how do you make them work for you? How do you get content that's really going to connect with your audience? How do you understand even who your audience is? How do you get to know them more of a personal level? And just understanding what a funnel is and being able to scale, meaning that your business can withstand a COVID situation. It can withstand different environments based on the way that you've modelled it, especially in this digital age. It wasn't until I understood all of the technologies, you know, the strategies, the automation, how to score things, that things really started to change. And that's what I share with all of you. OK, so essentially women in digital business empowers underrepresented women to really get to that six, seven figure digital business that is automated through a strategic marketing makeover system. There's a system to this and it's about adapting that system to your vision, to your audience and the, your audience wants and needs. And that is what we do. I just want you to reduce the amount of mistakes and years that it took me. So today we are very much going to be looking at content marketing. So here's what we're going to cover. We're going to determine the voice and style. You're going to think about your content types and choose them. You're going to build out a content marketing plan. You're going to look at how you're going to monetize your content because it's great to produce content for brand awareness, but how would it actually lead to mon monetization? How would it actually lead to conversion? This is key because essentially marketing is the promotion of sales and goods sell so essentially you can't run away from sales much as most people think oh I don't like sales I don't do sales I'm not really that type of person you need to sell to make your business a success so it's just about figuring out how to monetize your content without having to be in someone's face saying buy it buy it whatever the call to action is on the content and last is we're going to look at KPIs um, to be a successful business person and to run successful marketing campaigns, you need to make sure you've got key performance indicators that you need to meet. OK, because otherwise it's all for vanity and just creativity. Um, marketing is a science and it's also um, psychology as well. And it's about understanding the balance of the skill set in that. It is your job to get sales and it's a technical approach you take. But the creativity comes from the fact that it's human. It has to be human to human. And like I said, content, um, content, content marketing is the vehicle that navigates that. So let's look at the first part, how to determine your voice and style. Um, how do we do that? What does that look like? Sorry, guys, I can see me in the corner of my screen and it's slightly off putting. So I'm going to minimize me. There we go. So I can't see myself. So let's determine your voice and style. Let's have a think about this. And I think in terms of finding your voice, it's really important before you start any content marketing that you've really got a brand where you understand what your brand promises. You are extremely clear on who your target audience is and the different segments within that audience. So if you was targeting mums, are you targeting mums that are new mums? Are you targeting mums with teenage kids? Are you targeting work from home mums? Are you targeting housewives? Are you targeting career women? Are you targeting single mums? The list can go on. So when I say segmentation, you want to be very clear about the segments of your audience. You want to make sure that you have created a brand that plugs into your audience and you need to make sure you are solving a problem, a pain point or a challenge with the product or service that you're offering them. Your product offering needs to marry to your target audience because actually that is one of the most fundamental problems of why marketing campaigns and funnels don't succeed. The two don't sync. And I've got more information for you about this at the end of the workshop on how you can really do the groundwork. Because if you haven't got your brand right and you're not clear about um, if your product is viable or not, you're not clear on who your target audience is, you will find no matter how great your marketing campaign or funnel is, it just doesn't convert because it's being built on a weak foundation. There's going to be a miscommunication. Um, what do I mean by miscommunication? You are going to be selling something to the wrong audience. OK, so just be really, really mindful um, about your branding. And again, please make sure that you go to our YouTube channel um, and you follow me, Natalia Nicholson's YouTube, because there are workshops about everything that I'm talking about that you can reference on there. So it's really important that you find your own voice. Um, I just can't stress that enough. The personality um, needs to be consistently shined through. So it needs to be in your brand guidelines. It needs to be a part of your story. There's a why 
all set up your own business there's a why behind it whether it's something personal to you it's something that happened to someone and you've decided that you know you're starting this business to combat that problem or you're a part of a cause or a social enterprise whether you just really enjoy and love what you do and you just want to do it and get paid of it for it your why your story it needs to be in your writing it's what makes your writing you you are why people want to buy people buy from people so it's really important that you find your voice and this should be a part of your brand guidelines so if anybody was writing your website copy um, landing pages social media posts maybe you've got a VA by having those brand guidelines you are telling them exactly the tonality of your voice you know are you fun is it more authoritative you know is it more sexy is it cute like what is it that you're what is your brand saying what's your brand promise and that needs to come out in your writing without a strong voice your content will never rise above the crowd it will be like chat gpt as brilliant as it is it doesn't have a tone or personality behind it you want to have that tone whether it's being playful whether it's high energy um if anybody that knows me you'll know when i write something because you can it almost hears like i'm saying it because i'm quite a passionate person okay so it's important that you find your voice it's important that you have your brand guidelines and your voice and tonality is clearly described on what that is because it means anybody else working with you will be on the same page if not you're going to create many voices and you're going to create an inconsistency in your brand and your messaging that will confuse your audience your audience at all time needs to feel like it's you <laughs> OK, they don't want to do with any anyone. You're new and you're small. They want to know that, you know what, it's the CEO, it's the owner. So your voice needs to come through. Um, how do you develop your brand voice? On the screen is a picture of Ryan Dias. He's a big, big, big digital marketer in America. Um, his voice is very quirky, um, sometimes a little sassy. Um, that's his style. You know, I'm very passionate. I talk very loudly. I can speak too fast sometimes and I get excited. That's my brand voice. But if you're not sure on who your brand voice is, model it after someone, um, someone at your company, model it after a direct competition and look at their brand value values. Pull inspiration from characters, other brands, books. Think about what you stand for. But more importantly, practice, practice, practice. And any brand voice is going to be the most authentic when it comes from your voice. OK, but you want to be able to establish that in your business brand. OK, um, so just be aware of your brand. Like I said, um, Princess is here with us now, our community manager. Princess, in the chat, if you could just put our YouTube channel, that would be great. So if anybody wants to join the workshop about branding, how to create um, a good brand, how to create your brand story, you know, what your brand stands for, all of that, you can log on to YouTube. Please make sure you subscribe and you can watch those workshops. OK, so develop your brand voice. Who do you want to be? You know, if you want to be that next Oprah Winfrey, do that. You know, for me, when I looked at people I want to be like, I thought, OK, a tonality of an Oprah and a Tara Banks works really well for me. So if you're not sure, develop it. Start thinking about your inspiration. OK, oh, I want to go forward, but I think I'm going to go back. Yes, I did. Here we go back in the game so one of the exercises I want you to do whether you're doing it right this second with me or whether you're going to go away and you're going to do this in your own time but I want you to do it is I want you to think about some of your favorite brands and try to describe that brand voice and then think about your own brand how would you describe your voice if you don't have one how would you like to your voice to sound whether you have one or not? I want you to really think about this in terms of your voice, whether it's written, whether you're a vlogger and you're going to do videos, it's how you're going to connect with your audience. And it's a great way sometimes to think about, OK, what is my brand voice? How would I describe it? What would I like it to sound like if I don't have a brand voice? It now gets you to think about, OK, so if I look at that brand voice, what type of customers like that brand voice? What brand voice have I been displaying in the past? What are the results that I've got? Some of you have got businesses where you might have data to think back, but your job with content is to find that human connection. It's about, think about it. if you see an ad and you can read it and you just feel sold to. 
but then you might read an ad that you don't even realize you're reading the ad it's something really informative you know even this morning I heard my husband listening to this blood pressure um, video and it was definitely in a marketing funnel and he was like oh my gosh this is so interesting I was like yeah but they're going to sell you a product at the end and he was like how do you know that and I was like because it's a funnel you're at the stage where they want your details or they want you to buy something of low value to see what it is that they work but he couldn't see that because this interview that he was doing was really informative and it was about lowering blood pressure so it just seemed like you know knowledge that he was gaining and ideas it was part of a funnel to sell something but clearly they did a really good job because my husband didn't feel sold to he didn't instantly feel like yeah 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 what have I got to buy now which some of us, as soon as we see enter an email address or we see something, there's telltale signs, aren't there, that makes you know, I'm about to get sold to. Here we go again, another salesperson. And that's when we think of sales, we have a lot of negative connotations. So I want you to think about your favorite brands, describe their brand voice, and then now think about your own brand. Feel free to take a picture of this slide. Or like I said, if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, this um video is that a good word yep this video this training will be going up live on youtube and we'll let you know via email when it's gone live so you've got the chance to go back through these decks again so don't worry if you haven't taken um a picture or you want to reference them a grain so you want to create your own style guide so a living document that provides context direction and rules every writer at your company should follow in order to keep your brand's voice consistent cannot cannot go on about this um, any more than I have. So within your brow gu guidelines, you should have a mood board. And that mood board will be the types of images. It will be the font that you use, the font for your headlines, your subheadlines, the body of your text, the colours that you can use, how you can use a logo, whether it's on its side, transparency, black and white background, and then the other way around white and black where background. So your style guide should be a guide and it should be a part of your brand that everybody can refer to, not just for tone of voice, but to style. The worst thing you want is your website to look one way, your social media posts to look another way, any blogs you write to look another way. Inconsistency breaks trust. OK, the minute you see that someone's got a UR, the right URL, OK, I don't see any like WordPress or any funny numbers. It's some a company's got a telephone number, an email address that isn't a Gmail or a Yahoo. It's got a style. It's got a brand, a strong brand sense. It makes you as a customer trust more. We, trust me, we all do it. I do it. The minute I see like a Gmail or a Yahoo account, that lets me know, OK, this is a one man band. Can they really help? Because maybe while I'm after is too big. We all do it. We make assumptions based on things. So what else goes into a style guide? Um, when it comes to content, as much as it's human to human, we want to connect. Grammar and punctuation is really important. There are some people that cannot wait to tell you when you've made a spelling mistake. And I always like calling them out and saying, you know, I've got dys I'm dyslexia. What's your excuse? Um, the world doesn't end because there are some typos. But some people are very funny about it. And especially if you're in the service industry, just try to avoid it. So there's softwares like Gram Grammarly, but you want to do a double space um, after a period, like what's your stance on the Oxford um, comma? Also, when it comes to grammar and punctuation rules, if you're using a software like Grammarly, please make sure you've got it set on the right country. OK, um, that is really, really important. <laughs> um, again, English does not English do not like American English. Um, we're really hot on that. Americans don't really care um, most in most part, which is great. But just make sure you're under the right country, even if it's the same language. So, again, design those guidelines. Do lots of visual aids in that guidelines. You know, again, does your brand have a font? And it should. You know, when to use bold italics or underline. Um, write an example, making sure there's examples of pieces already written that you can show or model the voice and tone or what it is that you're trying to get across, giving people a good understanding of who your audience is. It means that whether you're writing, you've got a VA writing for you, a copywriter, someone doing content marketing, as your team grows, it means everybody's on the same hymn book. So all written communication, all videos, all design, you're all singing off the same hymn book. So somebody can, if you keep repeating your ethos and your company culture and what you stand for, you know, your audience starts to buy into that. 
inconsistencies break trust. And along with the style guard, anything else you want can go in there. This is not a limited list and a rule book. You can put anything in there that you feel needs to go in there. So it's well established that these are your brand guidelines. Your team understand it. Anybody that's going to come on board that you're working with understands it. So you can be singing off the same hymn sheet. You know, even when it comes to staff, the amount of times I see businesses spend so much time onboarding someone and having to tell them all this stuff as you go along where they could have had one document that would clear up a lot of stuff for them. OK, um, that is a, going back again. So part two, what's your content types going to be? So there's different types of content and we don't want to be doing all of them. So you need to think within this list It's either one to three, no more than three. What are the different types of content that I'm going to focus on? And any of you that have done sessions about the customer journey, the first part of the customer journey is the awareness stage, you know, making your audience or your prospects, should I say, aware of what you do. Um, and even that times, I'll say to people, whether it's social media, it's SEO, it's search, again, no more than three. You don't need to be on every platform because guess what? Your audience will only be hanging out in certain places. So there's no need to be on all of them. You just need to be actively on the ones that your audience is on. So you need to think about, OK, what is going to be my main type of content that I'm going to build connections and engage with my audience to find out more about them, create more personal relationships, which makes me understand them more, which now gives me more insight to understand what I'm going to sell to them and how I package it to them. Knowing your customers in great intimacy and depth only benefits you because you'll sell better, because you'll understand who you're selling to. That's how you master content marketing. That's how you master writing content or um, video sales scripts. You know, content isn't just written. Even if it's video, there still has to be a structure to it. And it's about understanding, OK, which of the content vehicles will I use to build that human to human relationship? You know, when we look at the customer journey, the awareness is like meeting someone and your eyes connect. The sub, someone subscribing to you and engaging with you is all the fun conversations you might have with someone until you go out on the first date. That first date is like converting into a cell. The lead magnet, you know, subscribing, giving your email address and subscribing to something so you can grow your CRM is like asking someone for their number. It's about building meaningful relationships through content. So for your business, you know, is your audience more into blogs, videos, podcasts, newsletters? infographics maybe you've got an e-commerce site maybe you know it's optimization on that website and having information explained in a design is a better type of content case studies white papers guides checklists downloadable worksheets like what's the type of content that your audience reads or watches and that's the type of content that you really want to create engagement on and maybe possibly awareness um, and, and other stages of the customer journey. Again, if you check our YouTube channel out, you will find out more about some of the topics that I'm talking about now because um, there'll be workshops on them. And like Princess said, please join our Facebook group where we interact and we have a lot of engagement and we can help. So please do join the Facebook group. So those are the different types of content. What's your flavour? Keep going back, don't we? You know, what is it? What content type do you feel would work well for you and your audience? Oh, nearly, nearly. There we go. So choose your topic. So what you want to do is if it's a blog, you want your core topics. Again, they need to relate directly to your customer. What are their pains? What are their challenges? What's the solutions around those pain point and challenges? You need to present yourself as an authority and a brand leader and the go to of your marketplace. Because you want your prospects to listen to you because as they listen and they trust you more and they connect with you, they will buy from you. So put together your core topics. And I always put together my core topics by looking at the pains and challenges and then signing up for news alerts. So I'll sign up for news alerts on Google. I'll use answer the public. Um, Princess, if you get a chance, if you can pop that into the chat, that would be brilliant. Answer the public and Bazumo are two pieces of software that you can use of content that's trending and for answer the public content, what people are searching for in terms of, you know, your marketplace. So it's typing what you do in and finding out what are people searching for in relation to that. So these are great tools in terms of for you to find core topics. 
your core topics are the pain point challenges and problems that your audience has in terms of your product and service that you sell okay so you need to sit down and this is not a sales task but this is a what do they need to know one of the best ways to create your core topics is to think what would be my prospects um objection to sell what would be their objection to sell and whatever their objections to sales might be, that's the type of content that you want to produce. Because generally, if we're interested in something as consumers, what do we do? We go and research to see if we can find someone better, someone cheaper, someone that's respected more, someone that actually gets reviews, um, gets reviews and you can read about them. So just be very clear on what are your core topics. And the best way to do that is thinking about the objection to sales and also the three big things. I like the number three. What's the three big things that really hacks off your prospect in terms of what you do and what you're trying to sell? What is it? And it's about speaking about it and having discussions, giving communication, giving advice, giving help, and then being able to get those people to engage back and hear their thoughts so you can learn more about them. Um, related topics, touch on topics that your customer will relate to, but may not directly relate to your offer. So you are not selling. You can give someone a solution that doesn't relate to what you do. But trust me, if they feel like what you're saying is true, they will buy from you anywhere. So just a few examples of this. If you look at the website Digital Marketeer, their core offer is digital marketing trainings. Their core topics are overarching marketing topics. Their related topics are more niche sub-subjects, so social media, how to use TikTok, how to put a reel together. So more niche subtopics in digital marketing trends, general bit, general knowledge, etc. So it's the same of the same, but you've got a core topic of that's what you stand for. And Digital Marketeer, which we're one of their partners of, to be fair, that's what they do. They produce loads and loads of content. But if you look them up, it's just a clear example. So part three, building out a marketing plan. OK, so you want to make sure when you are building out a marketing plan that you want to drive awareness for your brand. Um, there's three reasons that you're going to be led in your campaigns by you're going to be looking for three goals, should I say, sorry. Your first goal is awareness and branding. Your second goal is to get leads and keep getting leads so you got leads that you can convert and the third thing is conversion sales so the first thing you want to do for content market is to make that connection so you want to drive awareness for your brand you want to deliver value to your customers in advance that's done through content through you communicating and you want to gain trust and credibility which has very much come across in this workshop already i've kept going on about inconsistencies or break trust about being a brand authority the go-to that's credibility and that's what you really want to use content marketing for in the first place and sometimes we can get really passionate about you know subjects that we're writing or we're talking about and we forget the fundamentals of why we've got content marketing is to create bonded relationships. So what you talk about is key. OK, you need to create awareness from it. You need to be tapping into your audience and what they need help with in relation to your business or service or product that you sell. So the next thing you want to do um, as a goal is determine your keywords. So what keywords do people use to look you up? And if they don't know you exist or anybody like your business exists, what keywords would they use in relation to the problem and pain point and challenges that you that your prospect has that you solve, but they don't know you exist? So well, what keywords would they be using to combat the problem that's caused that your product or your service could help or solve the problem? make sense to so determine your keywords use your keyword research tools so you've got things like keywords everywhere sem rush my favorite sem rush tells you everything about your competitor what keywords they're using how much they bid on the size of their community where most of them's coming from it's just a brilliant tool for benchmarking um rfs there's a lot out there OK, um, you even Google Analytics. So use key search research tools to find out what are the keywords that are being used to search for the type of business that you've got 
or maybe what you do is quite niche it's also not just about the type of business that you've got for keywords but looking at the keywords that people use for the problem that is associated with what you solve make sense so keywords should ideally have a monthly search volume um, and that's greater and it's really you, you're looking for anything greater than 1000 okay so determine your keywords because once you determine them what are you going to do make sure that they're in your content okay so determine your keywords you want to build an editorial calendar content will take your life over um, you've got social media, you've got content writing of websites, content writings of your e-commerce site, content writing for blogs, um, content writing for sales pages within your funnels. Um, you need content for every single stage of that sales funnel. So it's important that for the social media and the content that you're putting out to connect with people and make your audience aware of you, you're going to need an editorial calendar. You shouldn't just be posting every day or every week. It's not productive for the amount of things that you've got to do in your business. So having a monthly schedule and just doing it monthly is much better. So you want to document key information about your planned content. So the content type, the keywords, the date that it's going to be posted the URLs, the core offers, anything associated with that post. What we do at Women in Digital Business is we actually put that into an Excel spreadsheet and then it gets uploaded and scheduled through a scheduler that schedules the posts when um, each day and also gives us stats and analytics of how the posts are doing. If we had a post that's got really good engagement, we need to be doing more posts like that. Okay, content rules, the way we write messages, how we connect with our audience at all time, we should have our avatars at mind. Again, if you want to find out more about customer avatars, please do make sure you subscribe to YouTube. So make sure you build an editorial um, content. You need a content planner. Else otherwise, this is just one segment of your business. It will take over your life. So now you want to think about monetizing your content it's all very well pouring all this content out but actually how will you make money off of it and um, various ways there's some really obvious ways so sponsored content sponsored blog posts um which is just straight advertising collaboration videos um content on youtube so it's very common now for people to do collaborations so you might find somewhere where you share a common target audience but you're not a conflict of interest. You complement one another. So then you might collaborate on videos and piggyback off of one another's following. Um, again, you can run ads, um, YouTube ads. You can run ads on your blog, um, blogs. You can build them up. So just think about whatever medium you're going to choose. Uh, remember, we went through the list of what types of content. Just think to yourself, how could I monetize this? Let me use YouTube, because actually, if I get enough subscribers on YouTube, I'll start to get paid and that provide me an income. Actually, I'm going to start a blog because the more popular your blogs come, ads can be run on it, which means you get paid. So think about, you know, ways to monetize your content. Makes sense. Um, you know, if you've got content going out that's really visual and it's video like TikTok or Instagram, how do you get people to leave those posts that they're viewing, following you for and actually engaging on? How do you use that content to actually monetize? What can you sell them? Can you get them into your funnel? Um, could you get someone to sponsor that ads because it gets such great engagement? So think about ways of how to monetize your content. And finally, what we're going to look at um, today is the KPIs, key performance indicators. Now, remember, the metrics you track might differ depending on your goals. So get clear on those goals before you dive in. I cannot stress how important that is for KPIs. If you start any marketing campaign, you should always be very clear about what your objectives are. Else otherwise, you will start to do what I call is the gunshot approach you're just looking yeah let's do that let's do that there's no strategy there's no thinking the key thing to being successful and getting to where you want is definitely taking the time to be strategic and giving yourself enough space in your mind to really be able to focus and understand what it is that you need to do to get to that end goal so it's important you've always got that end goal in mind so remember, if you want to measure what you're doing, if you want to score what you're doing to see if something's not going right, what is it? What do we need to change? 
how are we going to get back on top of this rather than the half built bridges of oh let's just do something else because this isn't working um data is really important the metrics can measure what we've done well what we've not done so well okay so you really want to be able to track this and understand what your goal is and for you to set a KPI, you need to be clear on the goal. Is your KPI to go from 0 to 10 cells? Is your key performance indicator to get to a following of 50,000 with engagement of 20% of that? Be very, very specific. Use the SMART goals. Be specific. Make sure that you can measure. Make sure your goal is attainable. Make sure your goal is realistic. And make sure your goal can be carried out in the time that you have given. SMART goals. So it's clear that you've got an objective and it's in you. If you're using smart goals, it will make sure that you are razor sharp, that you can produce KPIs, key performance indicators that are specific, are measurable. So you know where you're going right and where you're going wrong and what you need to do more of. They are attainable. It's not like, oh, I'm going to be in a millionaire in three months. They are realistic and they are done. They can be done in the time span set out. It's really important that you're clear around that and you can set great KPIs, key performance indicators. You understand how to get to the goal that you want. Else otherwise, you're just doing something in vain because it's like, oh, I've got to be producing reels. I've got to get content out. I've got to post every day. But you've forgotten about the why behind it. And you've also forgotten about, OK, what's the goal? What's the key KPI here? What do we set out to do? It's so easy to lose sight. So easy. Um, we are coming to an end, by the way, so please do start typing your questions into the chat. Um, Ayesa, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Um, I can see your question, but I'm going to tackle all of them. So if you've got any questions that you want to relate to your business, anything you might just want to come off mute and say, when we get to the Q&A bit, please do. Sharing is caring. Um, so, yeah, just remember about the metrics. Remember how we measure how successful that you are, um, if that makes sense. Um, so content marketing, what's the metrics that we want to track? What metrics do we want to track um, content marketing? So we've got blogging. If you're doing blogging, you know, it needs to be you need to have great page views. But is it just page views and people are leaving and going? You know, what time is their organic session? So how much sessions that they have and how long they're on them is really key. The ranking of keywords, the call to action performance, every piece of content that you write should always have a call to action, whether it's a learn more, share, follow, sign up, whatever the case may be. OK, um, it should have some type of call to action subscriptions. Um, you know, the amount of people that are subscribed to your blog. You know, if they're subscribing and they're deep, they get you're getting an email address, there's an opt in. You know, how many people have opted in? How many people when you're sending email marketing out are even opening the email, clicking on the links inside? Metrics tell you whether you're being successful at something or not. OK, um, we've also got video metrics, you know, so how many subscribers you've got if you're using YouTube? OK, um, how many YouTube likes or comments have you got? How many video views have you got? You know, these are metrics that you need to be looking at to see if, as, is this successful? Is this something I should be growing? Is this something we need to do more of? Podcast um, metrics, you know, iTunes ranking within the podcast type. Downloads, how many people are downloading? How many people are showing note pages and conversations going on? You have to know the metrics. That's why it's so important with social media that you measure what you're doing and you have got some type of scheduler that gives you analytics and you can get analytics from the platform. So if you was doing stuff on Instagram or Facebook, you can download insights just as LinkedIn and Twitter. What are the metrics telling you? How successful is this? You know, it's really important that we have to be able to measure how well our content's doing. And trust me when I say I could talk about content marketing forever. Like I said, it's the vehicle that connects each step to the customer journey. And if you haven't um, listened to the workshop about the customer journey or the fact that I keep referring to the customer journey, I really would suggest that you join our five day challenge, which over five days gets you to go through the whole customer journey and build out your own. So it's the start of building a strategic plan of understanding the journey you want to take your customer on and being able to really look at that. 
OK, so the five day challenge, Princess will put that into the chat. If you haven't done it, I suggest that you do. And just before I go into answering all the questions, one of the fundamental problems that I always see um, from my Google Digital Garage days, working with a lot of nonprofit or government organisations, the one thing that I would see over and over again is many businesses really focusing on putting themselves out there, promoting themselves, selling their business, wanting to get more sales in. But their audience doesn't necessarily see a need in what they're doing. If your audience doesn't see a need in your service or product, they are not your audience. Because if you are really solving a problem, your audience will bite your hand off, literally. <laughs> OK, um, so one of the fundamental things, and this is something that I've had to go and readdress in my business about four times over for my candle business and for women in digital business twice over. And it's really about understanding who is my audience and does my product or service provide a great need for them and solve a problem or a challenge that they're having in their life. Because if you don't get that right, you can't get your branding right. And it means that your funnel will always have loads of hole with it because guess what? <laughs> oh, sorry, um, ladies and gents. Guess why? Because they can't connect with your audience, audience, your content. Your audience can only connect with your content if it hits home to the heart. If it doesn't hit home to the heart, it's just another article. It's just another vlog. It's just another video. They might not even stop of it as they're scrolling through their timeline that we scroll on average three, nearly three miles a day. So understand that. OK, so it's really important to get that foundation part in of making sure that before you build out the strategy, you've got all your fundamentals right, which is understanding who your audience is, building out a uh, MPV. So you've got a viable product and service that that audience would just buy from you. And also just being able to see examples of other funnels where you can see, well, this isn't a Natalia thing. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, look, look. And you start to see the framework everywhere. OK, so in terms of that, what we've done here is we have put together a digital marketing boot camp. So if you're kind of unsure where to go, so you know what to do, you're just in, you're just unsure or you've got no idea where to begin. It's just all there in front of you, but it's all go gobbledygooky, uh, for want of a better word. You don't know what your business needs the most. Like, what is the problem here? And sometimes to know the problem, you've got to go back to the beginning. You don't understand your audience like you know, does my audience even really want this? My candle business, I sell luxury candles. They were far too cheap in the beginning. And I was making all these great offers thinking it's a no brainer. I'll take a cut of the market share. The problem was because of how my audience thinks, they just thought, well, I don't trust you. You're too good to be true selling soy wax candles at that price and that cheap. I put the price up. I started selling more. You need to understand who your audience is. I can't just can't stress how important that is. OK, um, you've tried everything on your own, but nothing seems to be working. Those half built bridges have got the better of you. You're struggling to sustain or boost your monthly revenue. You're not even paying yourself and your business isn't making a profit. So <clears throat> for that reason, the start of your journey of really being able to sell online successfully is to join our boot camp. So it's a three day boot camp. It can be done in one whole full day or it's best to do it across a series of three days for a few hours. So it's day one, two and three. It's online learning. You can do it at your own pace. And I'm not going to bang on about it. The boot camp is excellent. The ladies that have done it have got so much out of it. And the value in it's amazing. So you've got a guide to identifying the right market, winning products and the perfect offer. Learning about your target audience. We take a deep dive and you get to create your own customer avatar. Um, you know, how to really get more sales for your products or services and think about the transaction size, the transaction frequency, the customers. How do you increase all of that to actually start making money and proven methods of funnels that actually work that you can say, ah, oh, now I get it. Because when you see something play out, it's a lot easier. So all of this is valued at quite a lot. These are all mistakes that I've made again and again over the years that I've put into, a, OK, this is step one of you getting your digital business on track. It's to almost audit it completely. So you're really clear on, right, I know who my audience is. I know what I'm selling. I understand what my brand is, my customer promise. So then we can start on that customer journey and be more strategic because that foundation is done. So I've just made it really no brainer for you. It's $27.
worth so much more. We are huge in the African market. Um, you know, we've got great presence in Nigeria, in Ghana, in South Africa. And it's important for me if we're representing underrepresented women, we have to make these products really much more affordable because some coaches are charging an arm and leg. OK, I coach for I lecture at York University. I've got my own business that I've reached success through. I've coached and upskilled other businesses digitally. OK, I've been in larger organisations and done agency work. So these are all things that we just don't know. And if we knew it would just make things so much clearer. We have to start working more strategically. That's how you really get ahead and you get success. It's about really having a clear plan, but not a business plan by for a funding manager or a bank manager. We're talking about plans for entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs. So the QR code is on the screen, the links on the screen and Princess would also put it in the chat and I'm going to go to answering your questions. OK. Um, there we go. So here we go. We've got some questions. So Asasia has said how to get inspired about the topic of the content. Um, I think the best way to get inspired about the topic of the content is to create the avatars. If you've got, you know, three avatars and they've all got names and they represent different things. So depending on what you sell, um, let's say you was a marketer for women mumpreneurs, for example. How do you get inspired by that content? You might have three avatars. One might be called Katie, who has always been a hustler and now she's got a child, wants the flexibility of working. You might have Sam that is a nine to five worker, had kids, can't stand having to travel into the city every day and wants to do something that works from home. And then you might have, I don't know, Charmaine that, you know, is a mumpreneur that's been struggling. She set her own business up. She has been rearing to go, but she's not getting the results. Those avatars and getting to know your prospects or if you've got customers, find out who your customers are in that detail allows you to write content that either inspires them or gives them answers or supports them. So it's really about tapping into the psychology of your audience and being very deliberate and intentional about who you're targeting so you can write content that really connects. Um, Sakura said, I sell, um, sell, sell, tongue tied there. I sell accessories to boost mental health and well-being. I love that. How does one find topics to talk about? Oh my gosh, there's so much to talk about. Um, obviously, mental health and well-being is a huge topic. There are people that are having self-talk that don't even understand what's going through, going through their minds. So I think the most important thing with something like that is about you educating your audience. So it might be speaking about issues that don't get spoken about wide, widely, like, you know, what type of boost do you get for mental health and well-being um, with these accessories? You know, maybe having, you know, a podcast where you interview guests that have been through um, some real mental health and well-being and accessories have got them through it. You're not selling, but these are success stories. When you're reporting on them, it's making your audience feel like, oh, my gosh, that's amazing. I definitely want to try that. And then who do they go to when they want to try it to you? You, but you're not directly selling to them. So I think there's a lot of topics you can talk about. And a lot of the answers are with the customer. They're with your prospect. So ask your prospect, like, what are some of your challenges that you have? What are your pain points? Even if you haven't got a customer um, base to ask them, go into groups, go into communities, find out. You know, what is it that we're not talking about? What should we be talking about more? What do you need more help with in terms of boosting your mental health and well-being? You know, what are the things that are upsetting you? What are the things that you just want to vent about? And these are the things that you want to write about in your content. Um, so Cora also said, I currently talk about the benefits of my um, product, e.g., um, anxiety. So that's a good one, Sakura. There's a big difference between benefits and features. Because when we think of benefits, benefits is, let's take a diet product, because that's the best example. So let's say we've got a pinch of pills, you take them once a day, they're like vitamins, and they help you get to your desired weight. The benefits are you'll lose weight and you're going to feel more sexy about yourself, more confident. You're going to feel like you can go for the job for that you want to go to. You can speak up more. You'll meet the partner that you always wanted. You've seen these ads. I know you have. 
Um, but what they're doing is focusing on the benefits, okay? Not the features. The feature would be that it's a pill that has got all natural ingredients in it. It gives you all the vitamins that your body needs. Do you see the difference? When we're talking benefits, even though you've got EG anti-anxiety, the benefits would be talking about how the accessories give you a boost because of, I don't know, there's some type of metal that runs through it and it detects your happy hormone. I completely made that up. It's not my area of expertise. But it's just to give you an example of when you're saying talking about the benefits, avoid the features because anti-anxiety is actually the feature. It's not a benefit. What does life look like now that you've got accessories? You look great. What's it also doing for your mental health and well-being? OK, um, hopefully that helps. Um, Cynthia says, did you show the KPIs you found important for web pages and websites? Yeah, so Google Analytics, you know, your web traffic, how people, how long people spend on your each page that you've got, um, you know, where your traffic's coming from, your KPIs, you're going to set your KPIs as your key performance indicators that relate to the goals and objective that you have set. So in terms of the metrics being measured, if you've got an e-commerce store, you want to be measuring the metrics that work towards giving you the answers to get more customers. So things like how long they're spending on your site. Is there a particular page that they're going to? You've even got something called heat maps now that you can actually see your um, prospects and customers on your website, like physically moving around with the, map, the maps, um, which is a great piece of data software. So your KPIs, the important ones that you should be looking out for, relate to what you set as an objective in the first instance. Does that make sense? Google Analytics and any analytics tool will tell you everything you could possibly imagine about your web pages and websites. But what do you need to measure in terms of the goal that you've actually set? Um, so Cora has said, how long do you suggest recording content in advance for product based businesses? Trying to post every day is tiring. It sure is tiring. I would say to have themes that so it might be, you know, motivational Monday, Tuesday throwback. Um, but obviously related to your product or service. And remember, it's 80% content, 20% sales. You want to be offering genuine content because genuine content means genuine connections with people. Um, so I would say do it for the month, but allow some flexibility. If there's something trending or happening in the now, you would just post, you would add that in. So that's why having themes is great. And anything that you need to react to, you can post in the moment. Um, how do you find out what, you your audience wants in a survey um sometimes focus groups are really good as a starting point to be honest with you to have frank open conversations um because a survey is more about what you want to find out as opposed to what they want to find out in terms of what your audience wants to find out for me that would be a quiz um right Princess is kindly because I do have to wrap up now for any of you interested I'm actually going over to YouTube YouTube not YouTube I'm actually going over to our Facebook group now to go live of ask me anything so any more questions please do join me in the Facebook group which um, Princess our community manager has put in the chat she's also put the link to the boot camp um, and for those of you in Nigeria you've got your boot camp as well um, Nigeria we've got big supporters um, assessors quickly ask, is the video the most effective content to generate engagement? Assessor, let, how does your audience want, like their content? If you was targeting journalists, my guess would be they like reading, so it's probably blogs. So the answer should always be in your customer, your target audience. What format do they like um, their information in? I'm dyslexic, I'm a coach, I'm always going to like it visually in video. But what about your audience? Um, Cynthia, no problem. You are more than welcome. Um, no problem. I know you need to drop. Patricia, thank you so much, Natalia. This has been really helpful. Brilliant to hear. Um, Cynthia, that's fine. Thank you so much for all the thank yous and the lovely messages. Angela, thank you so much to Nat Natalia. Very helpful, informative. Laura, thanks. Angela, really helpful. Thank you, ladies. Big heart. Right, I'm a couple minutes late to go over into Facebook. I look forward to seeing some of you on the boot camp. Um, and don't forget to join me every week, Digital Marketing Corner, every Wednesday and straight after the Ask Me Anything in the Facebook group. Um, take care. God bless. Good morning. Good night. Good evening, wherever you are in the globe. Take care. Bye bye.